in one sec while I set up the stream, make sure that the announcement went out, and then I'll get started working on this thing. So normally, most of the time, whenever I'm doing a stream, is basically just working on whatever I have uh, to do at that particular day. There isn't really one particular task that uh, I am uh, tasked with doing necessarily. But uh, in this case, I thought I would record a little bit of a stream segment thing on uh, how I set up a, um, a stone textured title graphic that I've been asked to do for Colosseum uh, that's going to be released by Tasty Minstrel. Now, if you've been following my development on this uh, for a while, you know that I've already done a, uh, another logo graphic for Colosseum here uh, that was originally done here in InDesign, where I just set up some text on an arc. Uh, I think the font is, is from a Blam bot using an Orc Horde, and I just arced it ever so slightly, and then um, I took that arc and then I just uh, copied it and you know I, I could do an extrude, but um, the uh, which would basically just make a 3D sort of like perspective thing. But the thing is, uh, when you do a 3D extrude in Illustrator, you don't really have that much control over the perspective necessarily. Um, so it'll just go straight back. It doesn't have that like um, re receding into the horizon look that I was going for, sort of that Superman look. Um, and so I basically just copied it and then paste it in front and call that, uh, let's just say that I made that black, push it to the back layer, nudged it down, and then I adjusted the size of it. Ever so slightly, so like maybe like that. And then I just basically um, merged the, uh, well first, first, I gave each of these a stroke so that they thickened up a little bit. Um, copying that first before I start doing any destructive work here. Um, did a big stroke, called it like like ten point, whatever. Didn't really have to be that that thick necessarily, but after I did that stroke, made sure that the edges were a little bit more rounded, uh, the corners rather, and then object path. And I outline stroke so that the uh, the strokes here are actually objects instead of instead of just paths. And once I did all of that, then I went to the Pathfinder palette and and uh, united them all into a single object. And so now this is all one big compound path. Once I had done all of that, then I started removing all of the points that were in between the corners, so that there would be a more natural uh, distance between one corner and the other. So for example, let's zoom in here. So if I just remove these corners, you start getting like a faux perspective. It's not entirely perfect. Um, you do better by using some kind of 3D software, clearly, but um, it was enough and, and it, it, did, it did me right. And once I had that set up, once I had these corners set up, which I will do on this side now. Oops. Now what is the deal here? Oh, I see. So it's causing some freak outs here because I didn't actually close this path. So I gotta select this and connect it, and that should fix it. Zooming in to this corner and adjusting that and delete those points, those points, those points, and this one point. Close up that path by selecting one end of it and then closing the other. And this is not a perfect uh, replica of what I've already done here, but it's close enough to tell you, just to give you some context of where I'm starting from. Um, when I paste in front with the original graphic, you can kind of see the beginnings of where, where I was headed. The next step would have been to delete all of the points that uh, you can see, like here, between the, between the corner of that top L and the corner of that top L. I would remove all those points, basically just to fake the, uh, the sense of perspective that I have here. But anyway, that's all stuff I've already done. 
from there, I took it into Photoshop and I started uh, doing all these layers. First, I dropped in the uh, the overall shape as a white background so that I'd have some, some back to it. Uh, then I dropped in what was basically just the uh, just the shadow part of it. And if I select the actual layer, you can kind of see the, I don't know if you can see the resolution that, that I'm at here, but um, there's a selection here that basically just shows this is all one shape. And uh, if I just like fill it in, you can kind of see that it's one shape as well. Um, that like 3D perspective is basically a layer that I made that was using the noise filter, which was which is a pretty standard like noise filter that you can use any anywhere um, you can find that over here add noise then i took that noise layer and did a uh did another filter on it that was a motion blur uh with a radial uh setting so that instead of vertical it was uh oh, whoops it'll be radial blur right so radial blur, what it does is, if you uh, if you click on zoom, it just makes a uh, it takes the center point of whatever layer you've got and it makes it into like this kind of like explosion boom thing. I set that up um, and nudged it down so that the center point of that radial blur was actually below the horizon where you couldn't see it on this actual graphic, but it was enough to create this uh, this uh, simulation of a stone texture along the bottoms and the sides of each of these letters. Uh, and once that was established, I, I duplicated it and um, just to accent some of the darker parts and uh, did a multiply on that. And you'll notice that I only did that on the bottom parts of each letter. I've masked out, if I turn off this mask, you can kind of see that uh, this is basically just a duplicated layer of the same uh, stone texture, but I masked out all of the parts that were on the sides so that only the uh, bottom of each letter had that shadow, that shadow tone. Once that was done, I made another layer that was just flat, but it was this teal color because I knew the bulk of the uh, the box cover was going to be uh, sort of in an orange tone. Once that was done, then I uh, dropped in this uh, following the same shape of the of the proper letters, uh, making a mask out of those. I just dropped in this uh, concrete texture that I, uh, that I have. It's actually uh, outside my apartment. Just took a quick uh, high res image of that and made a mask out of that to uh, fit the shape of the letters. And then uh, I dropped in the actual letters themselves over over that very same texture uh, using a screen layer uh, layer effect so that only the uh, dark parts of that concrete texture actually had color in them. And once all that was done, uh, once all that was done, then I took another uh, copy of, this, of those same letters and did a bunch of other layer effects on here. So here you'll see that there's a stroke. It's about six points around there. I'll turn it on, on, on and off so you can actually see it. You can't really see too much, but it basically balanced out the border around these letters to make, to make sure that they stood out. Um, once uh, that stroke was there, I did an inner, sh inner shadow to kind of give some inset depth on each of these letters as well. And once that was done, I did a gradient overlay with a that was an orange that multiplied over that texture, but then uh, gradiated out into a, uh, a zero opacity layer. So you could still see the original texture underneath this effect, um, but uh, but the very bottom part had this much darker, uh, much more saturated and intense uh, orange, contrasting with that teal. Um, and that whole layer I've set to a zero fill so that uh, you don't see the actual uh, layer on its own. If you did, this would be what, it, what, it would, what you would see. You'd see the, it's basically just a white object. But when I set the fill to zero, all you see, because the opacity is still at 100%, is the effects that I have applied to that object, which uh, makes things very easy. And so that's how I made this original uh, layer logo graphic thing. Now here's where I'm at now. Um, there is a, a special deluxe box sleeve that, uh, that, uh, Tasty Mitchell is doing. And this is art from Jackie Davis, uh, that she's just completed for it. And the request I had is to make a new logo graphic that would fit this box sleeve along the top and on the, on the sides. Um, now that super saturated, like orange teal thing isn't quite going to work on 
something that's this uh, sort of regal. And I think what I want to do is take some of the same ideas that I have here, um, that, that I had in the original logo, and, and modify them so that they better fit this. And uh, here's how I'm going to do that. It's like 15 minutes in, and I'm actually telling you what it, what it is I'm going to be doing here. Um, all right. So uh, I've got the original logo here, and the big things I got to look at are the colors that I'm using and the saturation of those colors. So starting things off with just that gray, let's see if I can take this layer uh, or this layer, yeah. First I'm gonna take that uh, upper layer and set that gradient to be normal and make the color on that, let's make it white so that it's just an opaque covering and it's gradating out right now to a yellow, but it's a zero opacity, so there's a middle ground where you actually see it. Um, all right, so that's where it's starting. Inner shadow, I've got set to brown, which I don't want. I want to make this a more neutral color, so set that to a, like a darker blue. Because you can tell that the art here is still colorful, like it's still it's still bold and and uh, and really really uh, popping, but. Um, it's not the same like orange and teal cinematic look that uh, the box cover has, so I need to adjust accordingly and adjust the saturation accordingly so it fits. So once that's done here, I kind of want to increase that the opacity of that gradient overlay a little bit so that it better fits or, or it's a little more visible. I want you to be able to see the texture but not be so overwhelmed by it. Uh, one thing you'll you'll know doing a lot of uh, graphic design layout, the more textures you put inside letter forms, the more you risk uh, reducing their legibility. Now let's see here. Why is that very peculiar? This gradient overlay is not seeming to adjust. Hmm. Let's see if instead I just duplicate it. Okay. Perhaps not the most elegant solution. Now, these two upper layers that I have here. Oh, just to be clear, by the way, when I'm when I'm showing you how to do this stuff, I'm not saying it's the one way to do it. I I like by any means. No, 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 no. This is this is not like the one true way kind of deal here. Um, I kind of make things up as I go along and uh, half of what I've learned so far has just been exploring and making mistakes and if I see something that actually works I just kind of stick with it. So if you're having trouble figuring out how to do something in Photoshop, have no fear. Like The rest of us are kind of making it up as we go along too and when we figure out something that works we just kind of hang on to it for dear life. Uh, one thing I am curious about is if I make a mask on this top layer on which I only have the inner shadow and gradient overlay set up. Uh, actually, let me turn off the gradient overlay. So all I have is the inner shadow here. I've turned off the inner shadow on all, almost all the other layers. I think um, the reason why I'm doing the reason why I'm doing this, I'm, I noticed that the gradient, uh, the um, sorry, the inner shadow on the bottom part of this layer seems particularly stark when it's set against such a white background and I want to lower that a little bit so I'm going to remove the gradient over or not the gradient overlay the uh, inner shadow sorry I get it mixed up on all of the layers that are below here and only have a layer here that has the gradient shadow and I'm going to set a mask and what I'm curious about is if it will handle a gradient mask very well yeah so it, what that does instead is that it makes um, the object semi-transparent, and so Photoshop wants to put the layer effect across the uh, the semi-transparent part, so it's not quite going to work. Instead, what I have to do is put that layer inside a layer group just on its own. Then I can apply layer mask to that group and get what I want. There, see? Now, I'm making, I'm using the gradient tool to uh, fill in this mask that you see over here. And because that uh, mask is applied to the layer group and not to the just the layer itself, 
Photoshop knows to transition uh, some of that stuff without like actually like changing anything else. Now, one thing I'm curious about, I really want to fix this because I don't want to have to use multiple layers just to get the effect I need. I am... Uh... Hmm. So, yeah, that's particularly weird. Because, like, if I set the scale, I'm not sure what the scale is. Like I said, I'm just making stuff up. I don't know. So let's put this down to the bottom and see what we can do here. That's so strange. Well, okay. So I say I'm just going to go with it. Cool. All right. So we have the semi-transparent uh, layer on top of this stone graphic. Uh, we've got a pretty nice transition from that uh, inner shadow stroke all the way down here. Uh, I, that blue tint is not quite working for me, though. I want to set that to be a little bit more neutral. And I also want to make the size a little bit bigger. So we darken up the top part a little bit more. I'm going to increase the choke so that the uh, intensity of that shadow is a little bit starker, the contrast is higher. Set the distance a little bit lower, or rather higher, so it appears to be raised up a little bit more. And I'm gonna increase the size of that mask to be commensurate with that so that the starkness of the inner shadow matches the, uh, the bottom part here, because I want this like very intense contrast, like very polished marble almost. All right, so I've got that. I'm going to save that as column Hussein logo stone. And maximize compatibility, sure. I'm going to delete all these hidden layers because I don't need them right now. Just save that again so it's a smaller file. Then I'm going to save this as a TIFF with no layers. Call it Coliseum uh, logo stone.tiff. I'm discarding all layers, saving as a copy using LZW image compression, and I'm saving the transparency. Cool. Now I'm going back to InDesign where I've got a flattened version of the uh, Jackie Davis art for this box sleeve. And I'm going to place the uh, Coliseum logo in this InDesign file. And the reason why I'm not doing this in the original art in Photoshop is because uh, I find it easier and faster to, to take flattened elements, bring them into InDesign, uh, and sort of at a halfway point where I would be doing a little bit of graphic work, but also some text. Uh, so let's go to the logo folder, grab that new file. Let's drop this in here and see how it looks. It's a little bit big, so I'm gonna reduce the scale here and I want to adjust it so it fits the arc of that, uh, of that stone arch here. So that white stroke that I have on here, it per worked perfectly fine for the sort of cartoony look that was on the on the original box art, but I think I may have to go a little bit more muted and actually remove that, uh, that stroke. So let's try that. Uh, let's see here, removing that. I just removed the overall background stroke on this one to see how it looks. Stone TIFF, CW replace, and I'm going to update that link. So now we don't have that white stroke on the background anymore, but it looks a little fakey. Like it, it looks, it looks a little bit too 3D rendered compared to what we see on the background art. Um, and granted, that's sort of how it is. It, Oh, hey, Kara Respond, um, to reduce the scale, um, I don't really have a shortcut for that. All I do is just use whatever scale tool is available in each program and I uh, 
and I hit, uh, hit up and down when I've got it selected. So back to this stroke. The stroke is necessary, I think, um, because it, it, it does work for us, but it could probably be darker. So instead of deleting it entirely, let's see if we can make that dark and let's see we've got a stroke here let's see if that can match I'm going to delete the stroke on the layers that are above it see that still looks a little cartoony even more so so what i need to probably do is let's see if i can just remove the stroke entirely on this Okay, there's that. No stroke there. Ah, I see. Well, let's see what that looks like when it's just transparent like that. I'll see in Logo Stone, saving that over that file again. Let's update all the links. Hmm, that actually kind of works because the, uh, if you look in close, the transparent parts of this TIFF are just, are just see-through, but that in turn means that the natural colors behind the logo are coming through and adding a nice sort of uh, almost naturalistic texture, which actually kind of works for me. I, I quite like that. So let's see if we can bring that over to the other side. And rotating that. Now that arc look on the Colosseum logo doesn't quite work when it's a, on a, uh, on that very simple spine. I wonder if I need to have a straight version of this logo. So let's try that. First off, I'm going to save a new version of this. Colosseum logo stone straight. Seems easy enough to file, file into do. Let's make a new, ver new version of this, starting with the basic word. waiting for Photoshop to deal with the fonts. Oh, okay, so it looks like it's okay. I'm gonna grab the, I'm gonna set the font that it's actually supposed to be, which is, uh, as I recall, Orcord. Oh boy, Photoshop and fonts, they do not like each other very much. Yep, that's the one. I'm going to center that. Okay, so that's just the straight uh, version of the uh, of the title graphic, or just the just the typeface. Uh, I am going to rasterize that type so it's just a flat layer. All right, so got that. Now an easy way I can just not have to redo everything here and not have to redo all the work. Um, let's just say I don't have that, uh, that perspective look that's on the uh, stone right now. Say I just remove those bits here. Oh, you know what? Now that I see this, I wonder if I can, hmm. Okay, backtracking here. I'm going to come back to this, but I wonder if how the graphic would look on the box sleeve without that perspective look. And I'm going to update the links. No, 
Nope. Update logo stone. Oh, I replaced the wrong file there, sorry. Okay. Now I can update all these links. Now that is curious. That I that might actually be Hmm, that might be interesting. I mean just a stark white on that stone is maybe not a bad look. I mean I'll have to think about it. Um it's a little Halloween-y almost. That it's that it's that underlighting that's that's really throwing me. So Okay, so yeah, I go with this. Just say I, I, I kind of follow through on this and, and see where it takes me. Um, before I do this straight version that I was that I was working on, let me let me just go back to the original logo. This is this is how kind of how I work. I go back and forth. Like I come across one idea, then I kind of try another one and, and see what works. So it occurs to me that the Saturation on this is pretty stark compared to the color scheme that I got on the original uh, box sleeve art. So one way to fix that is to take the original art that I have here and actually just go ahead and take some of the textures from it and drop them into the logo. So instead of this concrete, very, uh, very stark and almost brutalist uh, texture. I'm gonna make a mask using the shape of the uh, of the arcing letters. Pasting inside that selection to automatically uh, make a mask with it. Increasing the size of that texture a little bit. Okay, so dragging that down here. And I want to, let's see if I can emulate the, uh, the color scheme a little bit that, that uh, Jackie has here. Uh, let's take the lightest possible shade of this uh, purplish highlight. Let's see, instead of white, uh, I can make that gradient, uh, that color. So let's say this gradient overlay, and I'm selecting the leftmost swatch and choosing that. Leftmost swatch, choosing that as well. Uh, it's a little too light, too, a little too dark, because we do want it to stand out from from the background, of course. But if I set up this background layer with a stroke that matches that color as well, Hmm. No, it doesn't quite work, does it? Oh, geez. I mean, let's just see how it looks, but I don't think it's going to work. It's, it's a weird mishmash. I don't, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, it's too, it's too low contrast. You can't see anything. Nah. No, 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 no. I mean, there, there's something there. there. There's something I could do. But I think the key isn't necessarily on the front so much, at least that is removing this texture, as it is overlaying a little bit more of the color from the uh, background. So let's say a color overlay. Instead of a stark gray, this purplish and opacity set it to a little bit dim like just just a very scarce like 
42% opacity on that color overlay. And in order to soften this a little bit, because it has such stark texture, I'm going to try a fill, try a, a uh, blur, just a slight blur, not too much, not too not too strong, because it, you know it's easy for a blur to just look out of focus and like look like an accident almost. And I've got this old texture now from the original art. Just slight screen on that, just to make it a little bit brighter. It's this middle ground that you're trying to achieve here with uh, the original art and the the very distinctly graphic element of, of the title. Hmm. Okay, so now that I've done that, I am going to make a new layer with that shadow, and if I can fill that with the foreground color swatch that I've got, which matches the background, and just a not a, this is not a final thing, but um, let me multiply it. It's a little severe, so if I adjust the opacity a little bit. What if it was a screen instead? Nah. I think it's partly the intensity of the that stroke. There's that. It's just this stroke to match that stroke. I mean, how, mm, if the shadows are a little bit more intense, maybe. So I'm gonna duplicate this this layer that has a multiply effect on it. Now that is peculiar. Why is it doing that? got a weird white band here. I'm not sure where that came from. Okay. Oh, I see. The white band came from there. That's strange. What if I fill it? Okay. I'm not sure why that white, why that weird band was there. Anyway. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna try that. Let's see how that goes. Cross your fingers. <laughs> I'll see him logo stone. Let's update those links. Okay, that's actually not bad. Um, I mean, it certainly blends in better. Doesn't, it isn't so stark. It has that more subdued look that I think uh, lets the art really shine through. Makes it a little bit more polished. Um, I wonder if that gradient would be better suited with a um, more of a yellow instead of that white. So let's go ahead and sample that, uh, that more yellowish tone from the box art. Sample that from, say, around here, this little stonework bit and start incorporating that into the gradient uh, overlay. So going to that gradient overlay, selecting that leftmost swatch, selecting that gradient overlay, selecting the leftmost swatch,
Do I have a gradient overlay on this as well? Oh, I surely do. Do I want to go whole hog and actually do this? I don't know if that fits so much. Let's see how it looks, but I have a bad feeling about it. I don't, I don't think that's going to work. Let's update all of the art. Oh, you know what? Mm. Yes, it does match the color scheme that uh, that I have on this box art, but... Just matching the color scheme isn't necessarily a good thing. In this case, it just it doesn't quite look. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta go with your gut. Um, design sometimes more art than design. There's a difference. Let's uh, take it a step back. Uh, one more step. Okay. So I've got this more. I still got a white very bottom edge here, but it transitions into that yellow, and that transitions into the stone. So it's sort of a compromise between the the very stark white version and the uh, stuff that I had before. So let's save that tiff. A lot of times it's adjustments of these tiny little bits that you have to go through to get get to the right option. Okay, that softened that white text, that, that white gradient a little bit. So I think I'm gonna go with that for now. Um, now, now I'm gonna have to deal with the uh, spine and actually do something that's, that's a little bit straighter. So starting things off here, do, 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 turning off everything except that straight version here. Uh, I'm gonna use the same texture that I have previously. Bring it up. Make a new mask based on the letters. Turn on the texture layer. I'm going to delete the existing layer mask and make a new layer mask based on my selection. Cool, now that's done. I'm uh, duplicating this letter layer thing. I am reducing. Uh, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste the layer effects that I have on this version, just to make sure I'm using everything exactly as I uh, as I want to. So duplicate layer, oh, not duplicate layer, sorry. Uh, copy layer style is what I want there. And then I'm copying and pasting that layer style onto this layer. So you'll see that I copied the stroke and I copied that gradient duplicating the layer there, and I'm gonna copy the layer style of the layer that's above it over here, copy layer style, paste layer style, there's that. Make a new layer above that, copy the layer style here, paste layer style, And I've got this oddball object here. So copy the layer style from that. Make a new layer that has that. Uh, I think that's the layer that has the um, inner shadow. Yep, sure is. And same thing as the previous file, I'm gonna make that a layer group and apply a mask to the layer group so that the inner shadow isn't gonna be affected Oh, hey, Seth. So taking that gradient. So I'm using the gradient tool again on that layer mask that's on that's applied to the layer group, uh, because if I had taken that mask and applied it to the layer that has the actual layer effects on it, it would make this odd gradient band where it's trying to make a shadow in the semi-transparent parts of that of that layer. So let's try that. Let's just see how that looks. It may, it's probably not going to be final, but uh, we'll see how it looks on the actual box sleeve. So saving transparency. Now let's replace that with the straight version that I just made. 
Okay, so the contrast is okay. So you've got on both spines here. Um, and I'm wondering if it's just a little bit too big. I mean, is that a little too humble for a game about gladiatorial and spectacle stuff? Mm. Uh, I mean, why not? I mean, it, it could it could be modest on the spine, but bold on the uh, on the front and the back. What's that called in terms of mullet? Like it's business on the sides, <laughs> party in the front and the back. Um, hmm. I mean, just looking at this now. Let's see. It, let's see a full screen. I mean, yeah, it looks a little metallic, to be honest with you. And I think it's the starkness of the of the of the gradient that's doing it. That the the dark parts are very very dark, and the light parts are very very light, which gives it that chrome sheen that you don't quite get on the big version because you can see the texture there. But on the small logo, the texture isn't as obvious, which just makes it look like this flat surface that has this chromey sheen to it. So I think the solution is going to have to have to be actually reducing the opacity of those white gradient layers. So you see a little bit more texture. So let's go to that gradient overlay and make that, make that white, but set a second swatch to be a little bit warmer. that white down a little bit and it kind of makes sense that the gradient here would behave a little bit differently since that you're working with an arc instead of um, you were working with an arc <clears throat> all right <clears throat> okay that opacity is a little bit it is pure white all right And so that shadow is particularly dark, so I'm going to adjust that a little bit. First of all, by maybe... No, it still should be a multiply, but I just need to reduce the opacity. Alright, so saving that... my tools back, update all of these links. Now that's certainly more muted, but it's also really hard to read. Now this is... Uh... Ah. Hey Seth, um, yes, uh, it would help to... Um, putting a white stroke around this text would help, and that's actually the original version of the logo did have that. I was concerned that it looks a little bit too cartoony, but I'll ha I'm happy to show you how it looks. Uh, first of all, let me take care of this thing. Let me step back a little bit. Setting up strokes, setting up strokes. My rule of thumb typically is that if you need a stroke to make text readable, the text is not going to be readable regardless, and all, all a stroke does is make um, make things even less readable. Um, that I, I feel like if typography is properly done, then it shouldn't need it shouldn't need adulteration for legibility's sake. If you want to do stuff to it to make it just look cool, 
that's a that's a whole different thing. But if you're trying to add strokes and stuff to to solve a problem of legibility, then it's the effects are not going to solve it. The only fundamental changes to the typography are going to solve that, and that includes contrast things like that. Um, but let's see. Get the stroke in. And I mean, the stroke is fine. It's fine. It's fine. But um, it's just a little too stark. So what I'm going to do is make a slightly, slightly darker stroke. Still with that gray tint to it. Make a layer group with that dark stroke layer in it. Put a mask on that layer group and transition the darkest parts of that stroke into the lightest, lightest parts of that stroke. Trying a little redder tone. Alright. Let's see how this looks. Before I get ahead of myself, I just want to see how it looks in actual context. Replace, save transparency. Bring it back into InDesign and update all the links. Let's set this display to be high quality so we can actually see what this looks like. I mean, yeah, like like I said, that white stroke, I had a white stroke there to begin with. Uh, just by way of comparison, you can see the um, white stroke here. Uh, 